Hello everybody and welcome back to another Kings of War Battle Report. I'm Visibly Riley, and this week we have Goblins vs Free Dwarves in a 2300 point battle of Invade. First up, we have my opponent's Free Dwarf Army. It opens with three, or I'm sorry, two regiments of Free Dwarf Berserkers, both of whom have Pathfinder. Then we have a regiment of Free Dwarf Rangers with the chance of hate Hernius' handpicked Rangers as well, granting them Vicious, Stealthy, and Elite Ranged. Then we have a troop two re and two regiments of Free Dwarf Brock Riders, all of whom took the Pathfinder upgrade, and then the troop has Skirmisher's Boots, so they are also nimble. <clears throat> then we have two regiments of Massive Hunting Packs, followed by Sferi Egalax, which is the named Brock Lord, uh, and Garrick Heavyhand. Following that, we have my opponent choosing, uh, choosing to take Eric's Mallets, which is, of course, the Free Dwarf formation. It involves three regiments of Free Dwarf Shield Breakers, all of whom my opponent has upgraded to have Throwing Massives, and then Eric himself, the Free Dwarf Lord, and my opponent has given them Wings of Honey Maze and the Lord's Jewel, granting them Aura, Iron Resolve for Dwarves only. Now, this formation is uh, a pretty interesting one, <clears throat> I think. Now, I think the Shield Breakers... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the Shield Breakers uh, can swap out to not have Scout in Clash 22. But of course, of course, in Eric's Mallets, they have to have Scout. So they do. But they also gain Nimble. Uh, and Nimble is, of course, a very powerful rule. It doesn't really matter if you're speed 4. Um, <laughs> it's just that good of a rule. Uh, and then Eric himself gains Scout here. So that is a flying Scouter. Always a good thing in any army. <clears throat> So anyway, let's move forward onto my goblin list. This is the same goblin list I brought to a tournament back in December or January. I'm not sure exactly when. It was after Clash 22 came out, um, so sometime around then, but before the FAQ. Uh, actually, it might have been even before that, before December. Wow. Anyway. <clears throat> So, I brought this to a tournament, but unfortunately, all the pictures just didn't turn out, which sucked because uh, I, at the last second, threw this together. I built the army in about three days, as in I did all the base work, uh, you know, I painted a bunch of the models, although I did have a fair number of them already painted, um, but, uh, which <laughs> you'll be able to tell the difference. It's the, uh, the blue in, uh, the, any goblins that have a lot of blue on them, I already had painted. But, anyway, um... Yeah, I threw this army together. I really liked it. Super fun, but unfortunately those pictures didn't turn out, so I thought, eh, screw it. I'm going to bring them to uh, to another game. Why not? It opens with three hordes of rabble, followed by a regiment of rabble. Then we have two troops of fleabag riders, three war trombones, two mop-up launchers, two wingets with both have, having uh, bombs away, a goblin slasher with aura rampage melee d3 for beasts only. In case you're wondering what are beasts, it's all the fleabag riders in this army. Then we have Grony Snark, of course, with Jared's Pendant giving uh, Aura Headstrong. Now, Grony has changed since that tournament uh, in that Grony, who is an incredibly overpowered character, used to also have Blast D3, period. So the shortbow is Blast D3, the melee is Blast D3, all of it was. Uh, and now it is just Blast D3 melee, which is worse, but Grony's still ooh, very overpowered. Anyway, uh, fun to play, though. <laughs> Uh, following that, we have a Wiz with the Crown of the Wizard King, plus one Spellcaster, and of course, Host Shadow Beast 8. We have Grup, Long Nail, and then Gorp's Explodomatic, uh, Explodomatic Bang Sticks, the Goblin Formation, one of my favorite formations in the game. Uh, it has two regiments of Fleabag Riders, both of whom I've chosen to give Mop Ups, and then one has the Potion of the Caterpillar, the other has Boots of Striding. And then I have Gorp himself, a King on Fleabag, and I've given them the Scythe of the Harvester. <clears throat> now, this is a fun formation, I say before. I generally don't run uh, Caterpillar or, or Pathfinder or uh, terrain-solving items onto uh, Cav, which I've harped on before again and again. But I will say, for this type of a unit, it really works. Because, uh, one, they only hit on a 4+, plus. they're not 3+, plus Cav. Uh, two, they kill themselves. <laughs> so, Gorp's uh, Explodomatic, the, the rules for it is that the Fleabag Riders, they both gain plus 1 Thunderous Charge, which is of course great, so now they're Thunder 2. And then every 6 that they roll the hit explodes, so they get 2 hits for every 6, but they also take 1 point of damage themselves. So that's why I don't bother they're giving them, you know, like a brew of strength or anything like that. I've messed around with Helm of the Drunken Ram, but, you know, uh, Thunderous 2 tends to be enough. Uh, and then Gorps himself <clears throat> gains Aura Elite for uh, Cavalry with the Goblin keyword. So, uh, again, all of my Fleabag Riders. And then also Goblin Chariots, which I did not bring, but it works on them too. Uh, and the Scythe of the Harvester is a fun one just because it obviously gives Rampage, which is great. But uh, more importantly, Rampage also works on uh, Gorp's Shortbow because it is uh, part of his base stats. It, it's not, you know, um, 
I can't remember how they worded it, but anytime you have a in the FAQ about Rampage and Slayer, they made it so anytime an item or a range attack is in your uh, not in your base stats, so you know your five attacks and you have the short bow, right? That you get Rampage and Slayer for. But if you have, say, um, a gun like the Halfling Engineer that just says it's three shots, you know, hits on a three, so on and so forth, <clears throat> well, that it doesn't work on. Which is interesting because I'm pretty sure it's specifically targeted Bangits uh, because Bangits are so good and obviously it was kind of ridiculous to have them with Rampage, but then they had to change the Bangit to get that to work, so just kind of funny how that worked out. Anyway, I digress. Uh, this list is also 10 points down. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to spend them. I could have just thrown a mop up onto uh, some rabble, but I didn't bother. It didn't really matter too much to me. <clears throat> so anyway, moving forward into Invade. Invade is, uh, at the end of the game, add up the total unit strength of each player's units that have the majority of their footprint on the opposing player's half of the board. This is the total number of victory points that each player scores. Uh, so Invade is emblematic of what I don't like about scenarios in Kings of War. It's just, you know, at the end of the game, push all your, on turn six, push all your stuff across the line and hope there isn't a turn seven. So not my favorite, but uh, still a simple one. So it's got that going for it. Anyway, here is the table. We open with three height six forests, <clears throat> just sort of, uh, you know, around. Uh, following two height three hills, we actually have both hills, at least part of one, in deployment zones. Now, the thing about hills and deployment zones is uh, I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh, you never do that. Well, you don't do that if you're doing, say, dot deployment, which is not my favorite type of deployment. But uh, you can do it if you have a set board. You just have to make sure that when you build the table, you put stuff to block that line of sight. So with this forest here, this height three hills in the center of a deployment zone, but the firing lanes are significantly limited, right? And this one over here, it's similar, right? So you have these firing lanes, but uh, you can't fire past these forests. And then of course, this large piece of blocking terrain takes up most of that hill. Now, <clears throat> I would prefer if this uh, this hill, I, I did set up the table, so, <laughs> or I helped set up the table, I should say, uh, was not central. I probably should have placed it a little off to the side so it doesn't have you know as much free reign as it does. But otherwise, it's fine to do. Just don't put too many of them, right? Uh, and don't make them too big. And then make sure that you're creating firing lanes, not just uh, having complete control over the table. Anyway. I digress. Let's move forward. We have three height two obstacles, followed by three height nine pieces of blocking terrain. Uh, <clears throat> I did. Uh, I, I I think we generally run these a little shorter, but you know, it just seemed uh, seemed good with these uh, these taller pillars to run them a little taller. And then this one over here is actually on a hill, so it's actually height twelve. So no nothing seeing over that. So with that said, let's go over the armies. We open with the dwarves. I didn't put out any fancy placards this time because I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> it's been a long year so far. So anyway, we have two our first two regiments of shield breakers, both of whom with throwing mastiffs. And then back here is the troop of Brock riders with the pathfinder and uh, skirmisher's boots, so nimble. To the right of that, we have the largest model on the smallest base I've seen, I think, in the game. <clears throat> this is my opponent's uh, Eric. Uh, with the wings of the honey maze being represented by this griffin. I actually really like, always like the uh, wild hammer dwarves in Warcraft's lore, so I'm cool with this. Uh, then we have the third regiment, uh, the third mallet in Eric's repertoire. Uh, we have uh, just sitting right there with the, with the throwing massives. And to the right of that, we have uh, both the regiments of uh, pathfinding Brock riders, and behind them, both the regiments of massives. Uh, right here is Garrick Heavyhand, a lovely mantic model. I don't think. Mantic makes a Garrick model proper, do they? This is just the Dwarf Lord model, which is uh, actually pretty cool. I actually like the uh, the Mantic Dwarfs quite a bit. To the right of that, we have uh, Severi Egalax. And right here, we have both the regiments of Berserkers chilling out in the forest. Of course, they have Pathfinder now. I do like them significantly more than in the previous or before Clash 22, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video, I hope. And finally, we have my opponent's regiment of uh, Rangers, of course, with... Uh, Hernius has handpicked Upgrade and the Chant of Hate. Now let's move on to the Goblin side. Facing off against those Rangers, we have the 1st Troop and 2nd Troop of Fleabag Riders, with the 1st Regiment of Fleabag Riders being back here. Uh, they are the uh, the J-Boots ones. Uh, and right here is, of course, Gorp chilling out with their, uh, with their Rampage, right, sword? I forgot what the Scythe of the Harvester is called for a second. Uh, right here. If you ever see the squigs on the table, uh, those are marking my mobbies, of course. Uh, so we have um, the second regiment of Fleabag Riders, of course, with the Pathfinder, and then the Goblin Slasher with the aura uh, for the uh, Rampage for Beasts. 
And to the right of that, we have the first and second horde of um, of Goblin Rabble. You can see what I was talking about. So these guys, I paint. I had uh, the goblins painted, obviously, not the bases. But I had the goblins painted and ready to go before the three-day period. And then these guys were painted after. Right? Same thing with all the squigs and all this stuff, right? Anyway, <clears throat> and right behind them, we have both the mop-up launchers. And, of course, the Goblin Wiz with uh, plus... With, uh, Ho Shadow Beast 8 and plus 6 inches on targets that are uh, spells that target my own models. So when I target something with uh, the Crown of the Wizard King makes it so when I target someone with my Ho Shadow Beast, I can do it from within 18 inches instead of 12. To the right of that, we have Grony Snark and Grop chilling out here. Uh, we have the third and final horde of Rabble and behind them the first, the second, and the third War Trombone. To the right of that, we have the first and second uh, Winget chilling out there. <laughs> you can see one of the Ornithopters have, has lost their uh, wing, and uh, this regiment of rabble has taken it. So uh, these things fall off all the time. They're a pain in the ass to pin, and I don't bother. So <laughs> I have a bunch of these old gyrocopters. So anyway, that's the army. Let's move on to turn one. So turn one ends up going to the goblins. I On the left flank here, I just scoot forward with my rabble. My plan is just to uh, utilize this fence uh, to mess around with my opponent. Now, it was interesting because I'm looking at this picture now. Actually, let's go back. Yeah. So, uh, and during this game, there's a point in it where my opponent was like, yeah, I don't want to, you know, like they weren't trying to make a big deal of it or anything. And they're like, but this fence keeps moving, right, a little bit. And I'm like... Hmm. In my head, I was thinking, I'm not sure how much it's actually moved, but uh, yeah, looking at this picture, it's been here since turn one. Uh, so I'm not sure if it actually moved that much, especially as uh, I don't move this, all right, that this rabble regiment just sort of chills here for a while. But I digress, it doesn't matter too much, because even if it were po pointing eh, more like this, it's actually such a long piece of terrain that there's always going to be a piece of it sticking out. And my point is that these guys have Pathfinder, but not Strider, so if they want to get into this regiment of rabble, they are going to end up being hindered. Uh, not that it takes much to kill rabble. But anyway, so I move forward with my with my rabble to mess around with my opponent. You can see uh, this is how the scout moves go. I did find it interesting that they didn't move Eric really aggressively. I probably would have because uh, they could have moved Eric aggressively and uh, still being uh, still inspired these two. And my shooting, while potent, is probably not going to be able to take down a Dwarf Lord, especially if you just stay at a range of the War Trombones for turn one. And these guys only have a 12-inch range, so if I want to shoot at you, <clears throat> I have to be within charge range. But I guess it makes a sort of sense, just because uh, I'm going to make it so my my War, uh, war Trombones can't be charged, because uh, it's only height 2, so it's not going to be able to see me over my Goblin. And then the... Uh, much taller <clears throat> wingets I just place in such a way where there's no way 20 mil base can land right so um well this one I don't because it doesn't matter Eric can't get to me but in general I'll just be doing that anyway uh I move forward with grup right here the plan is to uh just threaten these uh shield shield breakers yeah shield breakers because I can charge on a path here uh you can't quite see it but I can charge on a straight path here because when you charge you take the quickest route possible which has been defined as the one with the least pivots so when I charge forward um I can make it so if my opponent moves <clears throat> to within nine inches to be able to charge this uh rabble horde I will be able to charge them without being hindered uh, and that's the plan with grip and off here to the right, we see the rabble just... These guys go a little faster. Oh, I should say, actually, let's go back a pick. These rabble only go forward five because my war trombones can only go forward five. So just keep them together. Uh, and then these rabble go forward a little bit more just because uh, they can. Now, I do make it... I can't... <laughs> you can't see in this picture, but you'll see it later. Grony flies into this forest because I want Grony to be able to see anything I want to charge later. Uh, which means that I actually push the rabble horde back because uh, Grony is so powerful. I'd rather push back two hordes of rabble than uh, inconvenience Grony at all. <laughs> so anyway, that's why they're there. Now, uh, I do move forward this cav side... My, my plan here, and my opponent and I were talking through it, and they wanted to sort of have a game where um, we would talk through all of our moves. I have a hard time doing that, um, because I don't know what I'm going to do until I do it. Not much of a, a schemer. But <clears throat> my opponent wanted to talk through it, and it's like, yeah, with dwarves, you know, you do kind of, if this is the table, uh, you want to do a refuse flank. So you just deploy over here, right? You ignore that, 
and then you just castle up over here. Uh, and once I, you know, we were talking about that, it's like, yeah, that's pretty standard for dwarves. You can put a token unit over here if you want, but um, because I'm so much faster than they are, right? These are all speed 10 units. I just waited for my opponent's Brock Riders to go down and then deployed away from them. So if uh, if this is the table, my cab were deployed over here on my right flank, but if the uh, Brock Riders had been over here, I would have just deployed left. And if they were deployed centrally, right, well, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> Probably still deploy over here because I had a big piece of blocking terrain on the left. <clears throat> But anyway, I move forward with my cav. I do make a positioning error, actually two. One with my measuring. Uh, I thought I had measured the slasher to be so it can move seven and then have its leader point outside of the forest. So when I shoot, I'm not going to take a cover penalty. I actually missed that by like a millimeter. But anyway, I missed it. So that was a mild, uh, mild deployment mistake. And then here's a bigger one, which is I run Gorp uh, just sort of reflexively to uh, hide behind this troop of flea bag riders. I'm not sure that was a great idea just because <clears throat> the rangers are not going to be able to shoot at Gorp anyway. I could have had them right here, right? And it would have made it a lot easier for when my opponent shoots into these guys and maybe wavers them um, because I can uh, I can pivot easier, right? Um, but I do maintain my distance with this uh, with this unit. So if this unit pivots, uh, I do not clip them. So I'll just have to move the king first. But <clears throat> anyway, mistake is a mistake. And over here, just showing up. Yeah, that's where Grony ended up being. <laughs> you can see these guys being forced back. Just showing off that my Wiz is about to uh, it just move forward to take a shot onto my opponent's Sveri. I actually do two damage, which is uh, pretty good, considering I'm only Lightning Bolt 3 and they had cover. But still, two damage. Nice. <clears throat> and over here, I fire with my uh, whatever the, the bolt thrower on the back of this thing is called. And um, this is another model that was already painted and not by me. I don't know where the howda went. But anyway, I fire off. Um, it does. Uh, my opponent does have cover because I'm firing through the forest I moved into, but I still hit once uh, and do one wound to this unit of berserkers. So that's going to do it for my shooting, and uh, we move on to dwarf turn one. Uh, I forgot to take an end of turn shot, but you'll see it at the end of the dwarf turn anyway for the positioning. So anyway, the uh, the mallets just sort of move forward a little bit. Uh, this mallet uh, moves forward to be hyper aggressive, which I agree with. Uh, I, I mean, I would probably play these guys very aggressively, um, but they do make sure that all the goblins are in their front arc. It might not look like it, but it's, uh, it's just a perfect measurement to make sure. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> that's how they end up. Uh, we've got these guys just staying in the backfield. Now the point is that uh, this unit is a little bit farther back than you might be expecting, and it's because the winget cannot land behind them. It's impossible. Um, so that's the plan there, and I think the same thing with uh, this unit of hammers, although that one might not worry my opponent at all because, you know, they can just charge into it anyway. But anyway, uh, then we have the dogs moving forward. And here in the center, you can see the Brock Riders are like, oh, that's a lot of cav over there. We should probably reposition. So they use their speed eight to do just that, <clears throat> turning to face me. Uh, really good that they come with that Pathfinder now. It really helps them out. Just be able to go like, yeah, fuck a forest. <laughs> It'll go right through it. Um, <clears throat> and same thing for these Berserkers, which I, I find all this positioning quite interesting. I was having a conversation, I believe, actually, with uh, the guy <laughs> you can see kind of right here. Uh, and I kind of missed this, but I probably should have talked through this a little bit with my opponent um, just because they wanted to talk through their movements in the game. I'm looking at this and going, uh, Sveri is Sveri uh, exposed. I'm not in love with that positioning because they could have tilted this unit just a little bit more, right? And Or or held Sveri back a little bit uh, just to make sure that Sveri couldn't be charged. And that's my only real problem with this positioning. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good. Although these Brock Riders are kind of facing weirdly, right? Um, is, maybe there was no way to make them. Yeah, I bet that they just had to do this to actually get over here. So that makes sense. But anyway, that's where they end up. And then the Rangers, uh, their scout move just turned them towards my battle line. I actually really like the idea of deploying them to the side right there because it was a wall exactly on the 12 inch or just slightly uh, lower than 12 inches, but exactly on the deployment line, which makes it so uh, this unit could either scout and redeploy this way, right? If it wanted to, it could pivot and go five this way, or it could just pivot and stay here. It depends on what I did with my deployment. And since I outdropped my opponent by a lot, I think that this was a rather clever play. So anyway, they just turn and they're going <laughs> to weather the storm, I guess. And let's see how that goes. So first off, uh, we have, oh yeah, uh, they're throwing massives. Uh, Firing into my regiment of rabble, who are also uh, not 
inspired because I don't think that there's much of a point to it. Uh, they managed to do three damage to them with all those dogs and not get a waiver, so pretty cool with me. And over here, we have the Rangers firing off, doing three wounds to my troop in the front, uh, managing a waiver uh, just barely, um, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's it's pretty cool that they gave these guys all that plus nerve. I mean, they used to be 9-11 for the troop, and now they're 10-12, so I'm really into that. Anyway, uh, so end up with a wavered unit there, and that'll be the end of turn shot that I was promising from before. As you can see, uh, I actually... Man, this looks pretty cool. Uh, I like that, you know, that classic goblin on on dwarf nonsense, right? Looks uh, looks neat. Uh, you can see I'm sort of I'm sort of trying to set up to take this center and then fight off. My plan with the mallets is just to put my shooting over here and kill as many as I can before Eric probably comes and starts wrecking all these things anyway, right? That's why the trombones are over here. And then off here on the right, I plan to just suicide in my cav and hope that they last long enough to cause problems in the center. Then I can just move forward with my uh, with my rabble and uh, take the center there. So that's going to be the plan. Anyway, let's see how it all goes in turn two. So turn two for the goblins. Uh, first off, yeah, I move forward with my units. I abandon this wall that I was uh, you know, spending all that time talking about. But yeah, I just uh, advance forward. The point is to guard the flank for this unit. And that is because now uh, this <laughs> looks like, you know, there's a missing unit or two. Uh, that is because I forgot to take a picture during my during the beginning of the turn, but I charged in with uh, with Grup right here, uh, as I was saying before, into the flank of one of the mallets. I charged into the front with my rabble because uh, I wanted to make sure that they died, because as much as Host Shadow Beast is the big boogeyman right now, right? Like, oh, Host Shadow Beast 8, and like all these goblins have blasty 3 melee. It is really fun. It's really good, and I can see why people are mad about it in the same way that you'd be mad about like War Engine spam. The problem with it is that it's very, very unreliable. Uh, so I've I've played quite a few games now running all the Goblin Blast and Host Shadow Beast, and I can tell you that it very commonly just gets your uh, your heroes killed when you roll a little low, right? Or uh, maybe you you know you fail with a blast. The point is that there's a lot of points of failure for this uh, for this strategy, but it is very fun. So. Anyway, with that said, I move forward with the uh, the Wiz. I cast Host Shadow Beast onto Grup. I do get plus four, so the average. But I sent this uh, Rabble Horde in as well just to make sure that the mallets went down. And then I also send Grony into this dog pack because from where Grony lands, the other dog pack can't, uh, can't charge me. The only thing that can is Eric. Um, and while Eric might be able to one-shot me, is more likely to uh, get a waiver uh, because I, uh, Grony is a... 12, 14, right? So, you know, going in there with five attacks, let's say three hit, three wound even, uh, that's still not the best chance of even wavering me. And I do, of course, have headstrong. So that was the plan. I go in there. Uh, Grony, of course, has five attacks, you know, blast D3 plus uh, <laughs> thunder two, crush one. So I go into the dogs. I do a fair bit of damage and I get a waiver, which is nice. Uh, again, dog nerve is pretty high. I think they're on 11, 13. So I feel good about that. Uh, the waiver really helps me out. Make sure that uh, Eric can't just, you know, double charge kill him. So anyway, uh, and then I move forward with this troop of rabble just to uh, block the possible flank charge and then move forward with my wingets. And that way I was talking before to make sure that Eric cannot charge me because he cannot land. Uh, so <clears throat> that's the plan. And then the wingets both fire at the mallets uh, and do uh, incredibly well managing to kill them off with the help from my mop up launcher a little bit. Uh, I move forward with my war trombones. They're having a bit of a bit of a traffic jam here i'm not the best at these guys and it's because i normally play when i've been playing these i've been playing ratkin which theirs are nimble and uh i don't know it's uh, war bones are significantly harder to use i mean that said the the ratkin weapon team is the best version of this in the game i currently think i haven't tried out the dwarf one i'm excited to do so but uh having nimble and having speed six is just so good on a death five you know little uh, uh quote breath engine but anyway let's go off to the right you can see my rabble just advance forward. This rabble advances to get their leader point into the forest so I can see uh, what's going on. But I'm out of charge. Well, these guys can't see me. But I'm out of charge range of Garrick. Um, and it'll have to be dogs if they want to charge me. or And uh, Brock Riders, I guess, if they want. Uh, and then I charge in with all these units. So this is the unit that was wavered. As I mentioned before, they can pivot uh, freely and then back up 5 because they are nimble and have uh, speed 10. So I back up five, end up where I am, and then that allows me... Now, I do have to move my king in sort of like a weird way, uh, <clears throat> but 
I move my king uh, after I get a charge from the unit that was in the forest. I charge into the uh, berserkers that were right here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's Fairy Egalax, as I mentioned before. A uh, little exposed, and I was like, yeah, just pick that up when you can. So I go into Sveri, and then I have my unit with the J-Boots. I pop them. I charge over this wall into the uh, the unit of Berserkers that were right there. And then I have the troop that was somewhere, like, around here, maybe, um, charge, you know, using their Nimble. So they, you know, they pivot, blah, 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 you know, you know how Nimble charges work. Uh, so I go in here into the Rangers. It is a hindered charge, but I also managed to fire a mop-up onto this. So I pop my mop up, I do, uh, I don't roll terribly well with it, which is, you know, it's what happens. And then I'm rolling to hit. I did forget I was elite with this unit because I forgot about the aura. Oh no, I, I yeah, I forgot about both these auras. So I forgot I was elite and I forgot that I was uh, a, uh, not Slayer, Rampage. So I didn't roll that, but you know, I'm not too worried about it. It's like, it's, it's D3 more attacks on a 5 plus to hit unit, you know, 5 plus to hit, 4 plus to wound. Eh. Anyway, it could have mattered. Uh, I did miss the waiver by one, and of course, Rangers do not have headstrong, but I digress. Anyway, uh, you can see here, I did also manage on the previous turn, I think, to fire a uh, mop up onto this uh, onto this horde just to, uh, you know, because a little bit of extra damage. It's how the hordes kill, kill anything. So anyway, that's going to do it. Uh, so yeah, I managed to kill off Sperry here. I killed off that... Uh, that uh, regiment of berserkers i was really hoping to get a waiver on the rangers but i'll take what i can get and then uh they, i'm a little traffic jam so like i back up you know this unit can only just back up Sveri's unit just sort of sits here to uh to protect flanks <clears throat> and just uh ready themselves to get pummeled by the dwarf cavalry so anyway uh yeah this just showing off those those uh combats we've got that one yep 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 and of course yeah so i did four damage to them um, they're 14, 16, so, yeah, I, I believe I rolled a 9. So, anyway, good roll, though. Uh, so that's going to be the end of turn shot, or end of turn for the goblins. Let's see how the dwarves respond. So, the dwarf response is, of course, to charge. So, first off, we've got the hammers charging into my wounded unit of goblin rabble. That regiment's probably about to die. Uh, Eric decides to not go into Grony, and I think that's a rather astute plan because Grup is right there, right? And Grup is a duelist. So, even without Host Shadow Beast, that's eight attacks on threes to hit. Uh, with D3 each and Crush 1, and Eric is only def 5 because of the Wings of the Honey Maze. So um, I rather like that idea of just going like, <laughs> no no grub, no, 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 no. So anyway, flies over here just to protect itself from getting shot by War Trombones as well, and then readies the troop for a counter charge later. Um, the dogs back up, of course, away from Grony. And over here, things are a bit of a mess. First off, down here, we have these dogs charging into my rabble. I believe they do not have Pathfinder, so uh, that's a hinder charge there. Uh, we have a regiment of Brock Riders going to one of my rabble hordes. I'm not too worried about that. They'd have to roll pretty insane to, uh, to even get a waiver. Um, and then we've got the uh, Slayers going into my first unit of... Uh, of Fleabag Rider Regiments. Oh, also, both of these took four damage. They rolled the exact same thing against uh, Sperry and those Rangers, or in those uh, Berserkers. So they're already at four damage. They're probably about to die. This is what I mean by they're just kind of guided missiles. Um, another thing to look at in the future might be, you know, like the Crystal Pendant's interesting. I just feel like they're really easy to kill with shooting, right? Like they're going to damage themselves even, so just plank them a little bit. Um, but it is something to consider. So anyway, uh, my opponent goes in there, in there. The rangers countercharge into my troop, uh, probably about to kill them. <laughs> that's fair, but uh, and that's gonna do it for the charges. And there's of course no shooting, so let's see how that all goes. First off, uh, we have my the first regiment of mallets goes into my already wounded unit of rabble, managing nine wounds and only getting a waiver, rolling the first three of the game. And I'm like, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's a horde of rabble looking at your flank. Over here, we have the Berserkers doing a little bit better, uh, managing to kill off one of my regiments of Fleabag Riders. Uh, and then these Berserkers actually doing quite well. Nine wounds, uh, that's on the low side of average, I think. They've got 26 attacks, 13 um, with Vicious. Yeah, like nine wounds, not that bad. Uh, but they roll the big 11 for a waiver here. Now, they only needed a 10, but they did roll an 11, uh, and I end up wavered, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, uh, this was a pretty sexy charge, right? I have a flank charge there, and I've got a mop up to use, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. But anyway, uh, cool for my opponent. 
And over here, uh, well, things are in swing, swings and roundabouts, right? The Rangers go in only managing to waver my troop of Fleabag Riders, which I'm quite okay with. That means they will have to kill them again later. And here's the end of turn shot. Now, I know I didn't uh, take a picture of this. I just forgot. But uh, yeah, they pummel the unit to death. So both of Gorp's uh, Explodomatic guys are dead. But Gorp himself, ready to rock against Garrick? Seems like a bad charge. But anyway, I could. But that'll do it for turn two. Let's move into turn three. So turn three for the goblins. Uh, it goes how you might expect. <laughs> I I just sit still with this uh, this regiment of rabble. Now, there has some, been some rule um, confusion about this. And I believe the current rule states that you if you want to disengage, you must, uh, you must be able to withdraw the full inch, right? And I wanted my wingets to be able to shoot at, I think the dogs is what I want to shoot at, because they're both within 12. Um, and I couldn't position myself in such a way where I could disengage one and have them protected against Garrick in the same way that I mentioned before. So they just remain engaged. Um, they are, of course, wavered, so they're not going to be attacking. Um, and I don't quite buy the idea that you have to counter charge to be able to attack. I don't actually think that's true. Uh, it reads kind of both ways in the, the charge category. The the line that I'm specifically talking about is in charging, it states uh, for close combat, you choose any engaged units to attack with. And I'm like, well, if you remained engaged, you're engaged. Um, and it is a bit of a problem because Wavered, I believe, doesn't actually state you don't attack. But... I chose to, you know, obviously to go like, yeah, that's ridiculous. That's obviously unintended. Uh, so I just don't attack with this unit. Uh, and then I charge into the flank with my horde here. And then Grup goes in to finish off the dogs that Grony started. Uh, hopefully I can do that. And then I move forward with all my war trombones to start shooting into the center because uh, the mallets folded so quickly. Uh, so anyway, uh, the yeah, and then I counter charge into these dogs because screw them. And off here on the right, you can see, yeah, we just remain engaged because I don't see a point in, in uh, withdrawing. I could have done it if I didn't want to charge, right? But I I wanted that juicy flank, right? Like, I have I have a 10 attack slasher that's going to be 20 attacks on threes and then twos to wound. And I'm like, yeah, I want it. So I take it. Uh, I can also protect myself against the, uh, the Berserker charge because when I back up with this uh, nimble unit of... Fleabag Riders away from the uh, the Rangers I was fighting. I can make it so they can't actually fit between the Brock Riders and the uh, and my unit. Even if they reformed a charge over here, they'd have to uh, leave the combat. Right? They could withdraw one and disengage uh, a little bit to make that flank charge happen. But uh, then you know they'll get flank charged and killed. So I left it open to my opponent. Uh, they do have Slayers, so that might be good. But anyway, uh, I did the best I could. And then I go for a weird double charge here. <laughs> I've got Grony Snark in the side, and then I have Gorp in the front. And I was like, uh, I think I could do it. So, like, I get a host Shadow Beast onto Grony, right? And then I realize that, like, obviously I can't see Grony. So I'm like, okay, I'll just run over here then, just sit here. Uh, because I don't have really good uh, Lightning Bolt targets either, and I want to be able to target either of these heroes with my host Shadow Beast in subsequent turns. So anyway, we go over that. And let's go through the uh, the combats, or starting with, yep, starting with uh, the left. I do fire, by the way. I, I fire... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to mention this. So the other unit that had been wavered by the Rangers in uh, in turn one decide now to uh, just charge in. So my second troop goes in, and I slap another mob beast onto them, and then uh, my other mob beast launcher fires into the uh, into the Brock Rider troop that my, um, that my wingets are fighting. So anyway, uh, we have a fight right here. My horde and, uh, well, not my regiment, just the horde. No, 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 I must have fired here. Anyway, whatever. My horde kills off the uh, the mallets right there. I'm feeling quite good about that. Take it, dwarves, goblin forever. Uh, right over here, I fire. Oh, it looks like, uh, yeah, I managed to kill off those dogs on the counter charge with my horde of rabble. Uh, rabble killing two units this, uh, this turn and three units in this game. Ignore Grup. Grup. Uh, right here, I managed to get into the side. I do 10 wounds, and I'm uh, pretty happy about that. Uh, but don't roll the... I think they're an 18. <laughs> some some ridiculous nerve. So I don't kill them off. Uh, womp womp. But uh, anyway, still cool stuff. Up here, we have Gorp, uh, Gorp and Grony managing to do... 
uh, a decent number of wounds. I think it's nine onto the uh, the other regiment. Of course, they don't kill them, but I feel rather good about that because they're going to have to make a choice about which one of these they want to fight. Um, although they'll probably kill <laughs> whichever one they do. Uh, I think the other one will be able to finish them off next turn. So anyway, cool stuff. And over here, uh, yeah, my troop again goes in. Uh, I'm not sure what those wounds are at, but it's not high because I fail once again. So I, I have my mop up. I roll it. It, it does bubkiss. Uh, then I have seven plus D3 attacks. I remember this time. Oh, maybe no, or maybe I'm out of range. Either way, I did remember about Rampage uh, on after I failed to roll it in the previous turn. But anyway, um, I get in here with my, you know, five plus to hit. I am elite. Uh, and vicious, but uh, just not enough to even get a waiver. And I'm like, oh, I would have really liked that waiver. Would have been nice. But anyway, that'll do it. And then a very weird picture, very artsy picture, apparently, my phone took of uh, Grup destroying those dogs. So they're out of here. And here is the end of turn shot. Uh, yeah, it looks like I, I would be in range for that rampage. But either way, uh, I did fail it. So I uh, did manage to fire at the uh, the uh, Brock troop over here. They're pretty hard to kill off. I mean, I do ignore the cover, but uh, my my you know D three my blast D three uh, wingets, while very good, are still kind of swinging. Right, they're not going to always kill everything they shoot at. So anyway, uh, things work out pretty well. Let's see what the dwarves do in response. So dwarf turn three, uh, we have the troop, and yeah, so the troop goes into my horde right and uh eric goes into my rabble regiment they're already at nine wounds they're a 12 14 so uh one wound to not double one waiver seems pretty good uh then over here we have <clears throat> the uh the regiment of brock riders deciding to fight my horde of rabble that seems very smart considering they have they're already at nine wounds um they could have, of course, countercharged here, but I think removing this rabble is more important and just hoping that, you know, my dice fail me, which I am goblin, so it's bound to happen. Uh, and then we have the regiment of berserkers just choosing to kill off my troop of fleabag riders. Seems fair. Uh, we have the regiment of brock riders here deciding to strike down Gorp. Also seems fair. And then Garrick going into, going into Grony Snark. Again, I'm not thinking that uh, Garrick can kill me or even really get a realistic waiver on Grony in one turn. But it is possible, although, of course, I have Headstrong as well. So a bit mitigated there. Uh, and then, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the Rangers uh, countercharge into this troop of, uh, of wounded uh, Fleabag Riders. So anyway, let's see how that all goes. First off, we have... Uh, we have the horde fighting. Uh, did they do zero? There's no way. We'll, we'll see at the end of the picture. But anyway, we have uh, the regiment. I'm sorry. Yeah, the regiment of Brock Riders again wavering my unit. But this time they're at 14 wounds. So it was only a five. Uh, but they get the waiver, not the kill. I'm okay with that, of course. Uh, up here, the the uh, slayers managed. No, not slayers. The berserkers managed to kill off my troop of fleabag riders. Uh, we have the rangers killing off the other. They're at seven wounds. Yeah. Um, but yeah, couldn't roll that seven. Damn. Um, the the rangers here managed to kill off my troop of fleabag riders. And up here, we have uh, Garrick going into Grony, doing three wounds to him, or to her, uh, and not getting the waiver, thankfully. And then even weirder, this, <laughs> this regiment of Brock riders. Again, 26 attacks on fours and fours, because I did take their thunderous away. Uh, and Vicious, managing eight wounds onto, onto uh, Gorp here and rolling the second three of the game. So, <laughs> again, not even getting a waiver. I'm like, oof, that is, that's rough. That's a rough roll. So, uh, here's the end of turn shot. As you can see, the dwarves are struggling, but all they really need is one break this game, or the goblins to just uh, inevitably implode. So, they're still in it. You know, they've got plenty of unit strength over here, as long as they can weather the storm and just sort of kill off my damage dealers and then be able to deal with these rabble you know they can at least push for a tie so let's see what happens in turn four so turn four for the goblins uh i of course move one of my wingets right behind this uh regiment of i'm sorry troop of brock riders who got countercharged by my horde the plan is to uh to just uh start planning to score with these wingets because of course flyers are great scorers uh, and also maintain my shot onto Eric. I move this one to be impossible to charge by Eric. So, you know, that little trick again. Uh, and then I move forward into the forest with my <laughs> war trombones, hoping to snipe someone down. 
off here, you can see, yeah, actually, I block one of my War Trombones with the other War Trombone, but we're getting there, right? Five inches a turn, we'll do it. Uh, but I do have a clean shot onto this Regiment of Berserkers. Um, and then I take Grony into the flank of the Nine Wound Brock Riders. Uh, Grony does not have the Thunder right now, but does have the uh, five attacks on fours with Blast D3 and Crush 1. I do, of course, uh, fail Grony's uh, weird Cloak of Death move. And then I run Grup over here, because another thing about Grony is that uh, at the beginning of Grony's activation, you roll a die and on a one, all units within six take one point of damage, which means that you can, of course, move the Goblin units later or first before Grony to get them out of range and then roll it. So I roll it there after running off with Gorp into the flank of these rangers, hoping that a third Guiding Wolf will do it. Uh, and then after I roll it, I run forward with Grup because, uh, you know, Garrick Heavy Hands here. That's uh, the only the only individual. Well, there's Eric, but the individual that can't get away from me <laughs> that I can fight. Uh, and then I just sit here and remain engaged against the um, the... Other regiment of Berserker Brock Riders, and then again flank charge them with my uh, big ol' slasher. So that'll do it. Let's see how it all goes. Uh, first off, we have <laughs> my my uh, horde of rabble managing to kill off that troop of wounded Brock Riders. Seems good, but these rabble are really getting work in this game. Uh, and then I fire at Eric. I only do one wound. Fair. Up here, uh, a a slaughter happens with the Brock Riders. They're killed off by my uh, by my slasher, who tunes to face towards the Berserkers uh, right there. Over in this corner, yeah, we uh, <laughs> Crony manages. Actually, if we go back, uh, I, I need to go back a few. Actually, yeah. So I ha I also move forward with my Wiz this turn because I can uh, cast Ho Shadow Beast onto Crony. So yikes. Uh, and Grony, yeah, so Grony gets plus four attacks just like Grup before her and manages to kill off the Regiment of Brock Riders. Uh, even weirder, Gorp goes into uh, the Regiment of of uh, Wounded Scouts? What are they called? <laughs> the Rangers, I forgot for a second, brain fart. Uh, and I only do two wounds. I don't roll a six, so I don't hurt myself, but I do manage to kill them. So I just roll back to back, or not back to back, it's not inspired. So I do roll a seven that time, kill them off. Uh, so I'm feeling quite good. And then with my shooting, I managed to put uh, a, a decent number of wounds onto these Slayers. Now, Garrick does have Radiance of Life, so has been healing uh, one damage off of all the units. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about doing six because, you know, it's going to stick down to at least five, which is a great roll. And up here, here's the end of turn shot for the Goblins. Things are looking quite dire for the Dwarves. They only have one scoring unit left on the table. And, you know, the Goblins have one, two, three, four five six <laughs> six scoring units left yikes so we'll have to see what they can do at least they can exact revenge really start tearing these stupid goblins down and uh we'll move forward on to <laughs> so first off uh the berserkers charge into my slasher they hit the boxcar waiver so that was kind of funny um slashers do not have any way to mitigate this although i believe i could have just walked grony over as i believe it's aura headstrong period uh, for Jared's pendant, so uh, because it works on trolls, so I probably should have done that to <laughs> to activate the headstrong, but I forgot. Uh, and anyway, uh, over here we have Gareth uh, making it kind of, or Garrick making it kind of a moot point by just executing Grony on the spot, and I'm like, aw, aw, I wanted to use my aura headstrong. And up here, uh, Eric charges into one of my wingets, doing two damage to it and only getting a disorder, so I guess I can counter charge if I wanted. And here is the end of turn four shot for the dwarves as they make me pay for every ounce of dwarf blood spilled. But goblins laugh with glee and move on to turn five. So goblin turn five. Um, I believe I just walk away <laughs> with, the, with the winget and try to shoot at Garrick uh, with the other winget. And then one of my uh, mop-up launchers can fire there. And then I just keep going with the uh, rabble horde. And over here... All three of my War Trombones are now completely able to see these Slayers. I back up the inch with my, uh, with my, doesn't quite look like an inch, but I assure you, um, I, I mean, I easily could have, this, <laughs> this Rival Horde didn't, didn't do anything, but I just disengaged here, um, maybe we bumped it, doesn't matter. Point being, I just, uh, set myself up to shoot this down, I charge in with Grup into Garrick, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna host Shadow Beast here, it's gonna be 
hilarious. Uh, and then I just move over here again with uh, with Gorp because again I have five plus D three bow shots to uh, to contribute to this fight as well. So that's going to be the turn. Let's see how it goes. Uh, first off, I get this unit up to 18 wounds. I'm going to attribute that completely to Gorp and nothing to the <laughs> nothing to the uh, War Trombones, who definitely, no, nah, it was all Gorp, though. Uh, and Gr <laughs> Grup gets plus four attacks as well. Everyone's getting the, uh, the average here, the mean. Uh, and here is the end of turn five shot. So, of course, I don't do much to, uh, to Eric. That's fair. And then everything else melts. Uh, so I managed to kill off the uh, the Berserkers. I don't double one that. And then Grup, of course, has uh, 16 attacks because 4 plus 4 for the Host Shadow Beats. Then you double for Duelist. So 16 attacks on 3s that turn into D3 each uh, due to my Blast. And then, you know, I, I roll 5 plus to wound because uh, Garrick is de death 6. But uh, still a pretty funny bit. I think I did like an absurd, you know, 13 or 14 <laughs> wounds because I rolled really well in my blast. But um, And this is what people are really worried about with that Host Shadow Beast uh, plus, you know, plus blast combo. And I wouldn't be too hurt if they changed it. Same thing with Duelist or uh, Mikael's ability. If they changed it just to say you get the bonus attacks but you don't benefit from blast or duelist right i think that'd be okay um but honestly i don't really care either way uh <laughs> the problem was with goblin wizards damn it so anyway that's goblin turn five let's see what it all looks like with the dwarves uh here it is so we have garrick or i'm sorry not garrick uh eric charging into my winged not managing to kill it and that'll be the end of the game because my opponent's like of course you know it's impossible to win um and you know it's not going to be super fun for either of us, like, you know, Eric might be able to kill my winget, right? But I'm just not going to bother. Like, my turn is just going to be not fighting um, at all and automatically winning. So anyway, we stop there uh, for my unit strength across the table. I have 1, 2, 5, 8, uh, 8, 11, 12. <laughs> so it's going to be 12 to 0, so a victory for the goblins. And with that said, we'll move on to the conclusions and list discussion. So first off, I don't have many uh, conclusions to say about the game itself. Uh, as, I, as I've said before, I don't hate the fact that uh, you have the Host Shadow Beast plus Blast combo. I I think it's a um, negative play experience, though. In my, I guess my point is, if I were to organize my thoughts, I think about this a lot in terms of c competitive play versus... Um, sort of uh, for fun play, right? Which is if you're going for that top tournament spot, you're probably not going to bring a bunch of like Grup host Shadow Beast combos because they are combos and they fail quite easily. They, again, they have a lot of points of failure. So if you're going for a podium spot, uh, you're not going to bring them anyway because you want that consistency. So uh, with that said, it doesn't really change the top echelons of tournaments to nerf it. And then the more medium, right? So again, like you're going for that three to record at, at best at a tournament you're just looking to get over 50 percent or play your game down at you know down at your uh, lgs or your friend's house or whatever and those people are impacted quite heavily by this combo because it you know you you remember that time where your opponent showed up and just uh you know got a bunch of host shadow beasts up and you know blast d3 and just obliterated your thing or mikhail you know got plus eight attacks and walked right through your uh, your kraken or whatever it was and it's like, yeah, so that that doesn't feel particularly great. So a nerf here I would expect to be coming, and I would expect it to take the form of uh, you can never multiply out the attacks from uh, from House Shadow Beast. So <clears throat> you can't use Blast, you can't use Duelist, you can't use Mikael, anything like that. And uh, as I said before, I don't, yeah, I don't really care either way. I I think it's super fun to play it, but I can understand, you know, it would be frustrating in in one off games or again uh, in the the fat middle of a tournament. In the same way that War Engine spam was, like War Engine spam didn't light the world on fire. It wasn't super competitive, but it was super super annoying. Right? It was it sucked to play against. It just probably wasn't going to podium ever unless it got really lucky. It's the same thing here, but uh, I digress. Uh, I think Host Shadow Beast, yeah, that's a pretty reasonable nerf. As for the rest of the game, um, yeah, unfortunately my opponent, I think my opponent just uh, rolled a little poorly. And then, you know, when goblins are hot, they're hot. <laughs> so I didn't roll like super hot, but I did I did get some pretty, uh, pretty sexy rolls out there. Especially my Host Shadow Beast always hitting the mean. That's obviously amazing. 
Anyway, about the list, I'll start with the dwarf list. Um, I'm not too certain what I would do to this, as free dwarves are a... I don't know, they're a bit of an odd duck for me, because I'm not in love with Brock Riders. Uh, I do see how powerful they are, right? I've lost against free dwarves plenty of times, and especially due to Brock Riders, but I don't play them. Um, I played my dwarf army a lot uh, back in the day, but you know, mine is an old Warhammer army, although I do have a Mantic dwarf army too, I just haven't put it together. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm just not much of a cav with my dwarves, right? So I haven't used them, um, and that's probably where I'd start to pull them out just so I could understand the list a little bit better. Uh, I do think Free Dwarf Berserkers are better than I thought. Uh, they are still a little pricey for that def 4 and I think and I'll talk about that in a second uh, but still you know dash 17 they have the thunder now. If their special rule was better I think it should be which is I think it should just say while disordered this unit gains crushing one because on a counter charge is not always what you want to do because counter charges are always to the front right so if you if you can have a charge where like you know your unit gets charged here and due to a piece of blocking terrain like you get charged by your enemy right and your dwarves here are like well you know my leader points in your flank i could just take a regular charge and get it there but due to the dwarf the berserker special rule you would not get to your crushing one then you would or your thunderous because of course you're disordered so i think if they changed it to just say when disordered this unit gets crushing one at least that would feel a little bit better um but anyway i don't think they're too bad 180 is a little pricey for that though um mm, i don't know on the edge i think they're a viable unit not a competitive unit i guess is how i'd phrase it uh, and again, I said I'd talk about this, but that's a lot of Death 4, and my opponent uh, <laughs> really, really uh, got into it too, where it's like, yeah, it just seems like you get torn apart by shooting, you get torn apart by X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, it does seem that way. And I think, unfortunately, the answer for Free Dwarves is just, it's Earth Elementals, right? Like, they're Death 6, they're great, uh, your uh, Stone Priest is, a special, is an especially good wizard right now. Um, just all around, right? Like it could follow around uh, rangers. You know, it, it's uh, it's always spellcaster two, just natively, so it can just take scorched earth two with the conjurer staff. Like, just seems really good, and it's a little unfortunate just because it feels uh, shoehorned. But you can always play regular imperial dwarves. Although, again, uh, please rename them. Uh, don't call them dwarves. Just call them imperial dwarves. So much cooler. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it, right? Like, if you're a free dwarf player and you're like, yeah, it's a little boring, you could just play Imperial Dwarves too. So anyway, that's about all I have to say about the dwarf list. My goblin list, uh, it is very fun. Uh, I keep playing this, you know, I, I, I put it together, as I said, very quickly. Uh, just sort of threw it on the table. I love goblins. Uh, my first Warhammer army back in 2004 was just goblins. So I'm a huge fan. And obviously in King's War, they are quite powerful. So this is sort of my for funs list. Like, I love the fact that it self-destructs. I might put a few more things in that self-destruct in the future. Uh, and the only thing I haven't loved in a lot of games was the Goblin Slasher. Uh, it's, you know, mine's 225 points for that aura, which, you know, the the all the Fleabag Riders just explode anyway, so the aura doesn't matter too much, and then it ends up getting wavered and its gun does nothing. Uh, but I will say in this game, it felt really good, because the only reason the gun was as bad as it was was due to my error, and then, you know, that flank charge, it's 20 attacks on threes with crush two seems really solid, and it has strider. Um... The only thing I wish it had was was Fury or Headstrong, and you can just bring Grony for that. So uh, I'll definitely try that out in the future. Again, I, I like all the stuff in here. Grup is great. Uh, Grup's super fun, even without Ho Shadow Beast, in case you're wondering. But uh, Grony's a little overpowered, <laughs> but I'll probably keep it anyway. So anyway, my, I guess my point being that anytime Fleabag Riders are part of a goblin list, I think it's super fun. Um, and that's what I was hoping for with this army, and that's what it delivers. So I'm pretty happy with it. So anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think. You can leave a comment below, and until next time, bye.